Welcome to the Nutrition Soundbites podcast, a production of UCSF Student Health and Counseling Services. I'm Jessica Jones, your host and resident student health dietitian. In this podcast, we'll use a science-based approach to answer all of your burning nutrition questions. Our goal is to help you live your healthiest life that you actually enjoy living. Want your question featured on the next episode? Email it to jessica.jones at ucsf.edu. Now, let's get to it. All right, so this week's question comes from Susan, and she writes, I'm hearing so much about vitamin D in the news, but I don't really understand what it's used for in the body. I've heard that our skin makes vitamin D from the sun, but since SF is so cloudy year-round, how do I know that I'm getting enough? Should I be taking a supplement? All right, so that is a great question, Susan, and I'm so excited to answer it for you in this very first episode of the Nutrition Sound Bites podcast. Now, vitamin D is a topic that comes up on a daily basis with the counseling that I do with my patients. And just to start with the basics, what is vitamin D? Well, it's a fat soluble vitamin that's obtained from foods and also produced internally when the skin is exposed to sunlight. So we need vitamin D because it helps us to promote calcium absorption in the intestines, which helps to maintain the right level of calcium in the blood and bones. It also helps with cell growth, neuromuscular and immune function, and reducing inflammation. And if that's not enough, a growing body of research suggests that chronic vitamin D deficiency, meaning having low vitamin D for a long period of time, may play a role in the development of some cancers and other chronic diseases. So we've established that we definitely need vitamin D, it's very important, but how do we know how much vitamin D we actually need? Well, let's start by looking at the recommended dietary allowance, also known as the RDA. So healthy individuals between the ages of 19 and 50 years old need about 600 international units of vitamin D per day, and that covers most of our student population. Now, the RDA only increases slightly for folks over 70 years old, and that population needs about 800 international units of vitamin D daily. There are three ways to get enough vitamin D. The first is through food, the second is sun, and the third is through, you guessed it, supplementation. So let's start with my favorite topic of all time, which is food. (laughs) As a whole foods dietitian, I typically recommend that my patients try to meet their vitamin and mineral requirements from food, but this is a little bit tricky with vitamin D because it isn't found naturally in many foods. So the richest sources of vitamin D are foods like herring, cod liver oil, and catfish, but you will still find decent amounts in other fatty fish like halibut, salmon, sardines, and tuna. Vitamin D is also fortified in cow's milk, almond milk, and soy milk, but the catch here is that one serving only meets about one-fifth of your daily vitamin D needs, meaning that you'd have to have about five cups of milk per day to make sure you get that 600 international units of vitamin D which for some people is a lot. One thing I also want to point out is that if you're making almond milk at home, it's not actually going to be fortified with vitamin D. So your intake from that beverage is going to be zero. But that doesn't take away from the fact that homemade almond milk just tastes better. So we talked about which foods are good sources of vitamin D. And now I want to move on to my second favorite topic of all time, which is the sun. The amount of sun exposure a person needs to create adequate amounts of vitamin D varies, and it can depend on an individual's age, skin color, and any underlying health conditions. For example, did you know that people with darker skin typically need more sun exposure to promote adequate vitamin D synthesis? Additionally, the synthesis of vitamin D from the skin decreases with age. So how much sun do you actually need? Well, research suggests that approximately 5 to 30 minutes of sun exposure between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., which are peak sun hours, at least twice per week to the face, arms, legs, or back without sunscreen is adequate for vitamin D synthesis. But having said that, we also want to point out that because of skin cancer risks, initially time spent in the sun without sunscreen should be done in small doses during non-peak hours, especially if you have a family history of skin cancer. So one of the biggest questions that I get asked from my patients is, 
am I at risk for vitamin D deficiency? So who is at risk for having low vitamin D? Well, there are a couple of groups who do have a higher risk of vitamin D deficiency, and those include people with darker skin, individuals with malabsorption due to GI disorders like celiac or Crohn's disease, and people who are obese or who have undergone gastric bypass surgery. Now, I want to point out that obesity does not affect the skin's ability to synthesize vitamin D. Rather, greater amounts of subcutaneous fat alter the release of vitamin D into circulation. So if you do have an increased risk of vitamin D deficiency and you're curious about what the symptoms are, let's go over that now. So people with a mild to moderate vitamin D deficiency may be asymptomatic, meaning they don't experience any symptoms at all. However, people with extreme and prolonged deficiency may have some bone pain and tenderness, muscle weakness, and or a little bit of difficulty walking. So if you feel like you're someone who's not getting adequate vitamin D from food sources or you're not getting adequate sun exposure daily, then we recommend that you consider taking a vitamin D supplement. Now, some studies suggest that vitamin D3 is more effective at increasing the levels of vitamin D in your blood. And because of this, we recommend supplementation with vitamin D3 whenever possible. So again, if you're a healthy individual and you're not getting enough vitamin D from food and you're not getting enough sun exposure, then we recommend that you start with about 600 international units or IUs of vitamin D3 daily. All right, so now it's time for our recap. So the bottom line is that vitamin D is an important nutrient that has many crucial functions in the body, including calcium homeostasis. Again, there are three ways to obtain adequate vitamin D intake. So one is through the sun, your skin can synthesize vitamin D that way. The second is through food and the third is supplementation. Now the best food sources of vitamin D are fatty fish like herring and halibut, but you can also get small amounts of vitamin D from drinking vitamin D fortified milk, almond milk, or soy milk. And if you're worried that you're not getting enough vitamin D, you have three options. So option one is to eat more food that contains vitamin D. Option two is to take that supplement, and option three is to get more sun. But remember to keep in mind that prolonged sun exposure may increase your risk of skin cancer. So if you have a family history, baking in the sun without protection might not be your best option. In that case, you may want to consider supplementation with 600 units of D3 daily. Okay, so thank you so much for listening to the very first ever UCSF Nutrition Sound Bites podcast. I hope this information was helpful to you. And as always, always, if you want your question featured on the next episode, email it to me at jessica.jones at ucsf.edu. All right, I'll catch you on the next episode. Bye.